Hello everybody, let's go over quickly some simulation basics in Fathom. Suppose we're going to simulate some dice. Let's begin with one die. We're going to call it die1. We're going to make an attribute called that, and now we want to make a formula for die1. So I right-click on the name die1, choose Edit Formula from that, and I'm going to use my favorite random number formula, random pick. And since it's six-sided dice. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to choose from those six numbers at random and fairly. I click OK. Nothing happens. That's because there's no cases in the table. So I have to right click here. I'm going to say new cases and because I'm going to do a bunch of probability I want to make a thousand of them because that's what we do. And so now I see I've got different numbers that range from one to six. Let's make sure. So to check you always make a graph to check and put die one on the horizontal axis. I see, look, I do have numbers going from one to six, and I'm gonna re-randomize. I do Clover Y on the Mac, or Control Y on Windows, and I see that things vary in kind of the way I would expect. So now I've finished my one die simulation. Let's add a second die. I'm gonna call that one die two, and we're going to see a shortcut so we don't have to do the formula by hand. I'm going to right click on die one, choose copy formula. Now that whole random pick formula is in the clipboard. Right click on die two, do paste formula, and shazam, that formula gets applied to die two. So if I put die two on this axis, it's going to look kind of the same. But we want to sum these, so I'm going to make sum, and I'm going to make a formula for sum edit this formula is of course going to be die 1 plus die 2 and I should see numbers that range between 2 and 12 I can't really see it right here but if I make a graph I can tell it goes like that and look it follows the traditional pattern of sort of triangular and if I do clover Y a few times I will see that it continues to re-randomize and mostly 7 is the most likely outcome now having made our simulation with two dice and summing them, let's review a few of the additional features you might want to remember. Here's one. I can change the dot plot to a histogram by choosing histogram, so I can see those things. Another one is, suppose I want to find the empirical probability that you rolled a 2 or a 3. All I have to do is select two of the bars. I can do that by shift clicking or by drawing a rectangle that overlaps them. These are selected. And then, key thing, point at the collection, and pointing at the collection, I can now look down at the bottom and see that 89 out of 1,000 were 2 or 3, which means the empirical probability is 0 0.089, 8.9%. All right? Another thing to remember is that you can make a summary table. So I drag a summary table, and if I put sum on the summary table, I can see it's 6.834 is the mean because the mean is down here. If I want to add another quantity to the summary table, I can add a formula. The formula editor appears. And suppose I want to count sum is less than 4. I click OK. And look, 89 out of the 1,000 are either 2 or 3, because that's sum is less than 4. So if I select this S2 here, you see that it gets selected. So that's really good. The simulation we did with two dice and adding only used one collection. Let's do the kind of thing where we have to use two collections, which will require collecting measures. And we'll start here on the Kaiser site, where you see this statistic here, 30.5% of all California children are overweight or obese. 30.5%. Hmm. Let's make up a problem to go with that. Suppose we have a classroom with 32 kids in it, public school classroom, and half of them are overweight or obese. That's 50%. Is that significantly more than that 30.5% so that it would not arise by chance? Or is it something that could happen randomly? Let's find out. We'll switch to Fathom and construct the simulation. In order to do this, first we're going to create what we'll call our source collection, and this is going to be the collection that models the classroom. And so it's going to have just 32 cases in it, and we'll give it one variable. We'll call it size. And let's make its 32 cases and new cases. And I'll bring this over here so you can see it, 32. 
And now there are 32 blank ones. We need to make a formula for size. And you must know this idiom in Fathom. It's going to be if random is less than, and it's 30.5%, so that's 0 0.305. And if that's true, it's obese. And it could be obese or overweight, but we'll just use obese, and we'll call it slim. So these are the two values for size, obese or slim. And here we see our classroom. There are a few obese kids but a bunch of slim ones. Let's see what the distribution looks like inside this particular classroom. I'll make a summary table this time. Leave that there, and I'll put size in the summary table. We've got five obese kids and 27 slim. If I press Clover Y, there's 11, 8, 8, 7, 8, like that. Looks like we're not going to get 16 very often, but let's find out for sure. Notice, by the way, that this collection here, which represents the class, in fact, let's rename it class, has only 32 in it. It has to have 32 because we're comparing our class to this one, which is a class of kids who are randomly chosen. And we want to find out whether our class with 16 kids is in fact not randomly chosen, that they're particularly obese. So, in this randomly chosen class, we're going to collect these numbers 11, so we have to create, construct a measure. So I'm going to double click the collection that opens the inspector. And here's the cases panel, and we're going to go to the measures panel. And I'm going to create n obese and give it a formula. And the formula we'll get is count of size equals obese. Right? So that's going to give us that number. There's the 11, and if I press Control y a couple times, it changes to 8, changes to 9, changes to 11. That's great. Now we're going to collect measures. To define the measure, we double-clicked here to collect measures. I'm going to right-click here on the collection and choose Collect Measures. If you don't see Collect Measures here, it means you didn't define a measure first. So I'm going to do this. This is something you've seen before. A new collection appears called Measures from Class. I'm going to select it and make its table so you can see, oh yeah, these are the kinds of numbers we're looking for. And I'm going to turn animation off. And now it doesn't matter how many we make we can get whatever convenient number we want. Lately, we've been using 1,000, so I can collect 995 more. You can see we're collecting measures. We've got all kinds of them here. Let's look at the graph. If I look at the graph, see how many obese kids are there. And it is possible to get 16. And it does happen, but let's find out how many times. So I'm going to select, by dragging this rectangle, all the 16 and more, 16, 17, or 18. And I'm going to put my cursor over the measures collection and look down at the bottom. 14 out of 1,000 cases. That's 1.4% of the time. A randomly chosen group of 32 kids will have 16 or more obese kids in it. So now we have to decide, do we think that's evidence enough to reject the idea that the kids are randomly chosen. And usually at 1.4%, most statisticians would say yes. They'd say, yeah, that's too extreme. Chances are, at least it appears, that this classroom is not randomly chosen, that they are particularly porky. That's the deal. See you around.